Hey folks, welcome back. This is part two of the sword build. I just uh, had some minor straightening to do here and I managed to do it with my my propane shop heater. Um, that was able to get it hot enough and I did a lot of grinding since the last time, since the last video. I, I spared you the misery of that part. Um, I must have spent two or three hours on that. I, I, I didn't do it with the angle grinder. I, I actually wind up purchasing, purchasing one of those little stationary belt sanders from Harbor Freight for 75 bucks. I mean, you can't beat it. Came with way too many parts. I had to pull most of the parts off the stupid thing just to make it halfway decent. You know, they got so many guards on there. But, uh, yeah, it don't have enough power to hardly hurt you. You might take the skin off a knuckle if you're not careful, and that's about it. But, so, I just figured, well, we don't need all this safety equipment. So I'm just trying to get this tang squared away. Uh, I hadn't worked on the tang, uh, just the blade previously, and uh, I, I wanted to make sure before I went any fur further that the blade was going to hold up, and it seems to it seems to be doing pretty well in the strength department. Uh, so I just, you know, I, I kind of pulled my hair out trying to figure out a good guard design. I, I've been looking online and and all kinds of things and I, I just can't seem to come up with one I like and this is kind of a compromise I sort of you know it's th the sword sort of looks like a long sword so I sort of made a long sword guard if you will but honestly I, I don't know I just may redo the whole thing this this is just quarter inch steel I'm using it's just mild steel and uh, and I'm just tracing out the design that that I think I like and and uh, I'm just going with that. I've sort of been enjoying this sword build though, I must say. I plan on making, I would like to make some kind of a Viking sword to uh, you know, because somewhere back in the wood pile, I guess there's some Vikings in my heritage. But, uh, you know, I'm thinking maybe, maybe the one-handed chopper. I don't know what you call them. They're kind of like a modified Roman gladius. Pretty good sword, I, I suppose. But I'm, I don't know. I go through these phases and lately I've just been into swords. And... I get to the point where I can't stand it anymore and I just got to start making stuff and and that's where I'm at right here I'm you know I started this project a few weeks ago and, and I, I've been promising my wife I was gonna make her a sword for a long time and so here it is but lots left to do I mean there's I still have to make a sheath and sheath a sheath can take take you as long as the whole rest of the sword does I mean, you know to do a really nice job and and again, this, this whole thing is just utilitarian. Uh, you know, it's not meant to be... I'm going to finish it out and hopefully polish it and sharpen it, razor sharpen, all that stuff. But this thing's not a showpiece. I'm not going to put a whole lot of effort into making this thing just, you know, fantastic or anything. I just want a nice, usable sword that, uh, that has purpose. And after all, I, I, think, I think that's what most people, you know... Uh, in, in my class anyways, which would be considered the peasant class. You know, well, maybe peasants didn't even carry swords, maybe they carried spears, but the fortunate few that did happen to get a sword in their hands, I mean, it was more about utilitarian. That's what I'm picturing in my head anyways, because I don't know anything about that type of history, you know. So just doing this inside was kind of a pain because, you know, it's just been freezing cold outside and I just trying to come up with different ways of clamping this and, the, you know, um, you know, I got the vise upstairs, but it's kind of cramped quarters up there and I didn't want to go shooting sparks all over the room. So I kind of, I saved that for some of the finer detail work, but, you know, just doing what I'm, what I'm, what I can here, basically. We're just trying to get this guard shaped 
get it get it kind of roughed out sort of where we want it that's the other thing I can't stand gloves I know somebody's gonna mention hey why don't you wear some gloves I, I can't wear them um, they just they bother me I've never been able to so we throw it in the snow once in a while Folks, it was like minus 25 for the last two days. But that's what we get. We've had a, a perfect summer all year, or excuse me, a perfect winter all year. What I consider a perfect winter because it ain't been hardly a winter at all. I mean, we've had 50 and 60 degrees all the way up through January and February hits. And that's usually our coldest time of year anyways. But what do you guys think of this guard? you guys like the looks of it? I'm just, I'm struggling with this part of the sword. The blade, I, I kind of knew exactly what I wanted and it came out like I wanted and with little effort. But this doggone handle, I'm just, I don't know, it, it doesn't pop for me, you know, and uh, you'll see. But like I said, you know, the guard was kind of just like a long sword guard and, uh, you know, and that was the best I could kind of come up with for this style of sword. But I guess I could have put a hand guard on it as well. May still do that. I might just take the whole thing apart and redo it. I'm almost kind of leaning towards that. Or maybe I'll just, you know, I don't know. We'll see. I'm just making sure here that I got my marks right dead center. And, uh... So the best way I can come up with is just using this drill and I've done knife guards like this and it's really not half bad. I mean you can get through this material and make a nice slot pretty easily in just a few minutes with the drill bit. And you notice how I got it clamped in the vise, sort of even with the jaws there so the bit doesn't wander all over. That's sort of a trick I, I sort of learned. But once you get the holes drilled as close together as you, as you can get them, you sort of just go side, you know, like I'm doing here with the angle. And that removes almost all the rest of the material and you get a nice clean slot. You know, I did find a quarter inch drill bit over, I'm not using that bit right now, but I did find one down there, uh, like at Home Depot and it had like side cutting cutters on the drill bit itself. That would be perfect. But for the life of me, I can't find that stupid thing. I got, you know, that's what happens when you get more tools and you know what to do with. They're just scattered all over the place. and. And you go to find something and it, yeah, there's no finding it. That so yeah, just took me a few minutes to get this slot cut. It wasn't really no big deal at all. And this, uh, I couldn't find even my quarter inch bit. That would have been ideal because I wouldn't have to do so much filing afterwards as you'll see. But, but it worked pretty good. I got the slot cut in there and clean it up with the file made it wind up making a pretty tight fit and that was what I was after too I was after something that would really um, that you'd have to hammer down over over the tang you know to get it to you know so it wouldn't wiggle nothing worse than a wiggly guard especially on a sword because a sword seems to take a lot more abuse than a standard you know knife I just using a chainsaw file got the little nubs knocked off and I went with a bigger chainsaw file and was able to was able to get it get it pretty good so tuned it up here a little bit if you want a tight fit you got to go slow on the last stage you can't rush this part like I said it's my first sword but I've built enough knives you know where where I'm kind of halfway decent and you know with this part of the process you know process And it did. It wound up fitting really nicely. You know, by the time I epoxy that handle all up and everything, this thing ain't going nowhere. As long as that thing can't move backwards, it's it's not going to move from side to side at all. And see, normally on a knife, I would take and, you know, I would I would braise the back of the, the guard on with some brazing rod, but I didn't do that with this one. I was too afraid to mess up the temper. And the temper seemed to be perfect. I mean, I 
I got this thing I got this thing like a dull red to straighten it and it still retained all of the springiness I mean I can't bend it unless I heat it whatever kind of steel this is uh, that came from those leaf springs uh, I'm, a, I'm a believer in that stuff of course I don't know squat about steel maybe I've done something terrible to it and you know it's gonna blow up on me one day who knows I'm just uh, making sure I got a nice square handle you know so that's that's the hardest part but with this little disc in that table wasn't hard at all it was a piece of cake so somehow or another my video for for cutting out the pummel was was no good it didn't show up on my on my video so I don't know maybe it got maybe my battery was dead or whatever but you know same process I, I just traced it out and I cut it using the uh, cutoff wheel and then you know smoothed it out but here same thing I, I want to make this thing pretty tight so I'm taking it slow um, I made I made the notch uh, the same quarter inch wide and now I'm just uh, taking material off the tang to actually fit it it's uh, sometimes easier to do it that way hammer it on look for the marks and take off the marks and just go a little further and that's how it's done and if you go slow I mean you can make these things really fit nicely it didn't fit perfect it had some little tiny gaps after I wound up cutting the tang off but I mean it was good enough for me I'll fill it in with something and or I don't know I doubt the originals were you know, a lot of the originals, especially the utilitarian type swords, I don't think they were fit that well. I've seen a few of them, a few old swords, and they didn't seem like they were put together like super, super good. I mean, maybe some of the better ones for the higher class people, maybe. But just military swords, it didn't seem like they were. Yeah, this is looking like an arming sword. I don't know. See, I'm, I'm going to have to like stare at this thing for a couple weeks before I know what to do with it now or if I do anything at all maybe I'll maybe I'll, I'll grow to like it I don't know it just you know part of me likes it part of me doesn't maybe I'll grind the pummel off flush with the handle or something or maybe just make like a little tiny bump maybe I'll add another quarter inch of material back there We're just going to zip this tang off. I'll probably eventually wind up uh, taking a, you know, maybe a 16th inch drill bit, drilling it, you know, right through that pummel and through the tang, and then I'll put a, I'll put a piece of wire or a nail in there and, and rivet it to seal the deal. Yeah, just something about that whole thing I don't like. It, it just doesn't. I don't know. I keep saying it, but. But I have had a lot of fun doing this, and uh, tell me what you guys think. Do you guys like the handle? Do you hate it? I mean, do you have suggestions? Uh, let me know in the comments, and uh, you know, be sure and hit that subscribe button, and give me a thumbs up if this is the kind of content you guys like, and you think I'm doing a good job. Maybe give me some suggestions on my editing. I don't know. And uh, well, thanks a lot for watching, and we'll uh, we'll see you guys on the next one.